In this video, we'll talk about the transcription factors. Transcription factors are proteins involved in the process of transcription. And it initiates the transcription process and regulates gene expression. So it recruits RNA polymerase and modulate expression of many protein coding genes. Now, where does transcription factor binds? There are specific set of transcription factors that bind to the promoter region of a gene and helps the RNA polymerase to be recruited and initiate the transcription process. These kind of transcription factors are known as the general transcription factor. Their binding to the promoter is important for RNA polymerase recruitment. So they are the bare minimum to start our transcription. So in vitro situation, if you put these generalized transcription factor along with polymerase, transcription reaction should happen. Now, along with that, there are other set of transcription factors which can bind to regulatory elements such as an enhancer and interact with other proteins such as mediators to bring out or to modulate the rate of transcription. It can regulate how fast the transcription it would be, how efficient the transcription it would be. So these are known as specialized transcription factors. Now when we think about transcription, we have to imagine a 3D space. Inside the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell, there would be genome in a 3D organization. And it's damn complicated. You could have an organization like this and transcription factor has to navigate its way through the particular promoter site or a regulatory element and then give rise to a gene transcription. And all of this is happening in an incredibly crowded environment. So the question is uh, how exactly this is taking place inside the nucleus. In the nucleus, the DNA would not be alone. So we cannot only think of a DNA centric image when we are thinking about a transcription factor binding to a promoter. We have to think about the nucleosomes, the beads on string appearance of the chromatin. In this case, transcription factor would bind and RNA polymerase would move through the gene body. And this process is not so easy because there are many roadblocks in, in, the, in the path, right? There are several nucleosomes. Now, let's see what are the difficulties of a transcription factor getting recruited into the promoter. Let's say these are some promoter region of a particular gene in red and the yellow depicts the gene body. So obviously we are now looking at and appreciating a nucleosome centric view in a eukaryote. So the RNA polymerase and the transcription factor first need to get recruited into the promoter. Now if DNA is tightly wrapped around the uh, nucleosome uh, core, then it is difficult for the transcription factor to get recruited, right? So accessibility is a big issue in this case. Question is how this problem is solved then? So many of the cases, what happens is transcription factors interacts with complexes known as nucleosome remodeling complex, which kind of act on the DNA and the histone to modify the interactions between them. In this case, the nucleosome remodeling complex has modified it such a way that there is now accessibility and the transcription factor can bind to that. So transcription factor can one side interact with nucleosome remodeling complex but also specialized transcription factor can interact with enzymes like histone acetyl transferase which can modify histones histone acetyl transferase can put histone uh, acetyl marks on specific histones and as a consequence of that there would be now change in the chromatin architecture the chromatin would be more accessible because dna would be loosely packing the nucleosome there is a lot more accessibility. Transcription factors can access the promoter region. Even it can recruit polymerase and polymerase would find it easier to move along the gene body. So transcription factor can interact with many partners and that give rise to the effect on transcription. For example, if transcription factors interact with co-activator complex, it results in transcription activation. It can, in a context-dependent fashion, interact with co-repressor complex, which might lead to transcription repression. It can interact with histone acetyl transferase, which leads to acetylation of specific histones in, along the gene body, in the nucleosomes which are situated on the gene body. This would increase the accessibility, increase the chance of transcription. 
also there could be interaction with dna uh, sorry in interaction with histone deacetylases which deacetylate particular nucleosomes and lead to a chromatin compaction this would lead to a inhibition of transcription also nucleosome remodeling complex can interact with the overall chromatin in several ways transcription factor can uh, work hand in hand with this nucleosome remodeling complex leading to replacement of specific histones sliding of a specific nucleosome freeing up new spaces and also eviction of a histone so kicking out histone from its own way and making the road free for transcription factors or let's say rna polymerase so this is how possibly transcription factor along with its partner can have effect on the transcription now transcription factor has a peculiar feature that they mostly have a dna binding domain and this dna binding domain interacts with mostly the major groove of the dna there are a few excep exceptions but many of these transcription factors are interacting with the bases in the major groove such as we can take the example of helix loop helix family where the helixes are kind of inserted into the major groove we can take example of leucine zipper motifs leucine zipper motifs are also helix uh, alpha helical structures inserted into the grooves and also helix turn helix that are uh, sitting on the dna in the major groove region so major groove of the dna is a, a key site of interaction for many transcription factors there are several transcription factors which has beta uh, pleated sheet in their uh, in their dna binding domain and few of the interactions also happen in minor groove but in most of the cases it's a major groove of the dna which is targeted now transcription factor could be very important from a cell fate specification point of view let's say this cell can either have a epithelial fate versus a neuronal fate question is how this fate is chosen there are external and internal factors that can trigger specific master regulator transcription factor which might lead to acquisition of one fate this kind of regime is followed in the immune system let me give you a real example so in the immune system there is cd4 positive t helper cells which can ultimately give rise to several different subtypes of t helper cells like th1 th17 follicular t cells th2 cells etc but question is how to create these different kind of cells from one common progenitor type cell so external influence such as interferons or let's say cytokines trigger the activation of master transcription factors in the cd8 4 t cell and depending on which master transcription factor is triggered it would trigger a different gene expression module or it would activate a specific module which is exclusive to our cell and that would lead to specific terminal fates so these kind of uh, operational regimes are true for many biological systems and it is true for development as well in development transcription factor can work in various different way generally transcription factor is triggered by a specific morphogen exposure so morphogens ultimately lead to signaling pathways that activate specific transcription factors there are auto regulatory feed forward loop for example a morphogen or a signal leads to activation of a transcription factor and later on this transcription factor produce itself creating a auto uh, uh, for feed forward loop this kind of transcription example of this kind of transcription factor is pax3 which is responsive to the morphogen wind and it is found in neural tube development also there could be cascade of feed forward loop in this case product of each step is helping in the uh, forward step so that means a transcriptional factor cascade is regulating a gene network loop also there could be mutual repression one transcription factor is inhibiting the production of other transcription factor and this kind of mutual loop can create sharp tissue boundaries also there could be complicated transcription factor networks and in development for several uh, particular organs these kind of transcription factor networks are really important there could be mutual repression there could be feed forward activity feedback activity so all of the possible activities can be happening inside a complicated loop and these are really important for cell fate specification development and patterning so i hope this was useful if you if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can follow us on instagram or facebook
you can support our channel via super thanks you can uh, pay via paytm paypal or upi see you in next video